Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com coming at you again with another GPR tip for the week. And I want to start this off by asking you a question. When you go out to your site, you know, a site that you're going to work on, a project, um, and you take out your GPR, how long do you spend calibrating your instrument? How long do you spend calibrating your eyes and your mind and your cognitive map inside your brain, right? Adjusting yourself to what the data look like on that current site that you're working on. A lot of people I've spoken to lately, um, they don't even calibrate their instrument, okay? Or they'll get it, they'll kind of put a presetting in there and then they'll just go. And, and a lot of times, or, or sometimes that's I think okay, especially if you have a very easy site Certainly with concrete scanning, right? The concrete is going to look pretty similar and you're not going to have to adjust your eyes all that much. But on more complicated sites like utility locating, archaeological sites, forensic investigations, uh, 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 geological sites or investigations, um, you know, I encourage you to spend more time calibrating your instrument and even more importantly, calibrating yourself to what the data looked like on that site. I've been on sites where I have literally walked around with the GPR for one and a half to two hours before I even started collecting data. Now, if you're on an hourly raid and it's gonna be a two hour project, you can't spend two hours adjusting yourself. But um, spend a little bit more time if you can, right? Just a little bit more time. Push the GPR around, okay? You know, identify some more hyperbola and match them so you have a more accurate, uh, uh, you know, understanding of the dielectric values of that particular site, and then calibrate your instrument based on those. You know, spend a little bit more time, you know, looking at the contrast between the potential targets and the surrounding uh, uh, soil and how they're reflecting. Um, you know, spend some additional time opening your window up, and you know, how does it look? When, when, when you open the window up and the GPR can identify deeper targets. How does it look if you condense it and your window's really small because you say, you know what? My target is now only, I can see it. It's only three feet deep. Even though my instrument can go 12 feet deep, maybe I'll just reset it so I can get a really nice zoomed in picture, super high resolution to four feet or four and a half feet because I can see that my target is three feet or so down. Spend some time calibrating your instrument. Spend more time calibrating your instrument. And I can tell you this, if you're locating in real time, whether it's utilities, whether it's graves, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever your, your, your buried target is, tanks, right, fuel tanks or something like that, um, the more time that you spend before you begin to mark, the better off you're going to be. Adjusting yourself, your eyes, your brain to the data of the, that site is going to be very, very helpful. This is a tip that I really encourage everybody to use. I'm telling you, there have been in times, two hours I walked around with the GPR before I started marking targets um, because the contrast was just so minimal. The contrast between the target and the surrounding matrix was just so minimal. I wanted to make sure that I ran over these things a bunch of times before we started to actually collect data. And when we did, we we were able to do a, it was extremely successful project uh, uh, in that case. Um, and I'll, I'll link up the, the, another video where, where I talk about, uh, you know, issues with finding targets. But um, I really implore you, I encourage you to take some more time, just a little bit. If you're going to take zero time under normal circumstances, take 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes, if you can see here, uh, calibrating yourself. If you're going to take 10 minutes under normal circumstances, take 20 minutes on your project to calibrate the instrument and yourself to the data. Okay. If you're daring to spend 20 minutes on one time, take, if you have the time one day, take 45 minutes. Okay. Um, however many that is 45 minutes and spend the time to walk around the site with the, the GPR, uh, collect it multiple times. If you have to right? collect it once as your setup, as your calibration and collect it again with a whole nother calibration based on what you now know after collecting it the first time. On a small project, you can do this. So calibrate the instrument, spend more time, calibrate your eyes to the data, uh, especially if you're gonna mark in real time, you are gonna see a world of difference in the quality of work that you produce. So thank you so much, I appreciate you listening. Um, subscribe, 
to, to, the, to our channel. Click the subscribe button below and you'll uh, get notified every time we come out with a new video. Uh, hop over to learngpr.com, put your name and email in, and you'll get these videos into your inbox every single week, and you'll get our free introductory training video. It's a 40-minute video that goes into the fundamentals of ground-penetrating radar, completely free. Um, we just, we're out there to try to help as many people as we can. So go over to learngpr.com and grab that video, uh, and then put a comment below for this video, and tell me the longest that you've ever spent on a project calibrating your GPR. I want to know if somebody's beaten two hours. I want to know if somebody ever went out there for a five-day large data collection and calibrated their instrument for one or two days. I want to know that. I want to know if you've never calibrated your instrument before, and that's okay. There's no judgment, right? The whole point of Learn GPR is to help people get better. And so if you're not trained by the people who sold it to you, sometimes you just won't know how to actually proceed. So I encourage you to take more time calibrating it. Tell me in the comments below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.